Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Club 3D Royal Ace 290 though, not 290X. We did post this on Facebook because uh, if you're not following the Tiny Tom Logan Facebook page, why not? You should do. Post loads of random stuff up there, but mainly it's uh, like the builds. You get kind of early looks into the reviews that we're doing. Um, you get uh, little insights, really, into what's going on. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we hinted about this a little while ago because we were, um, I built it up just before I went away to have a few days off at a festival. And uh, so yeah, there was a lot of people, everyone kind of thought it was the 290X, but I asked Club 3D, they did offer me the 290X, I actually wanted the 290. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at this because I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for Club 3D cards. I even had one in the bench rig for donkeys, donkey jumps. Um, they did send me a t-shirt to wear, which was the Club 3D one, um, but I'm sorry, um, as you'll, uh, I'll mention it at the end, I've got my Gas Man t-shirt on and uh, anyone that knows what this is about, hang about to the end because I'll, uh, yeah, I'll say it. I don't want to do it in the main body of the video. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to do now, we're going to move on, we'll have a close look at the card as we always do, then we'll do the uh, look at the system, a couple of benchmarks um, and then we'll break off to a conclusion. If you do want to see all of the uh, in-depth comparisons, our graphs and the full review, please do feel free to click the link and go and have a look at the OC3D website. Um, but I will say before we kind of move on, please keep an ear out throughout this video because it's my first review that I've done uh, with a new mic pack um, and it's it's just a step up because we kept getting some crackling problems and it was actually the microphone jack pulling out of my old uh, radio mic set so I've upgraded and got some Sennheisers so uh, it's one of those ones where we need to keep an ear and it's the I'm, I'm hoping that obviously we're not going to get the crackling and stuff because with the Sen as they screw on but most importantly I'm actually hoping that the audio quality is going to go up now because the um, radio mic kit is that little bit better so um, in the you know in the description on Facebook on the forums whatever you want I actually would like to uh, hear your feedback and I will be monitoring it and you know coming in to read it all as well so uh, I'm going to be quiet now grab my remote and we can uh, move on Okay, so let's take a look around the card. Now I am stood behind and I've not done it this way for a little while, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Yeah, it's not hardly professional, but anyway, you're used to that with me. So, first things first, three small fans. With the old ones we were into, uh, well, well, we got used to uh, two slightly larger ones. So um, I'm gonna say from the, the start, because it was my, I have tested it obviously, but my thought initially was these were going to be loud. Uh, these were going to be loud. Jesus, Tom, get your language right. Um, but I can say that they're quieter than I expected, in a, in, but I'll explain more later. The next thing to kind of talk about is dual slot. We've obviously got the connections at the back. Um, display port, HDMI, two um, DVIs, but you can see that the, um, the cooler shroud does come out a little bit more. So it's kind of like two and a bit slots, two and a half slots. So if you've only got two slots between your cards, they won't fit together. You're going to need at least three slots between your cards, but you kind of, you should have that if you're going to be running Crossfire anyway. Um, we have obviously don't have Crossfire bridges because you don't need them anymore. It does it through the PCI Express. Uh, you can see really it's quite a big meaty cooler and it's not just one of those ones where it's just kind of, um, you know, it's a little bit bigger because of, you know, it's wasted space and all like shaped bloody shrouds and stuff. This is all quite simple. Nice big heat sinks there. Plenty of heat pipes in the middle. So yeah, we'll see how it performs in a little minute. But eight and a six pin PCI Express connector, that's kind of normal. Nice simple back plate with the writing around the right way. The only real thing that we've got on it is the, um, uh, the club, which is cut out of it. I do love the way this thing focuses now. Anyway, so it's, Kind of go on, focus that there we go. Nice and simple, does it all right. You'll see how it looks in the system in a minute. You can see that the the heat pipes do kind of stick out the, the end a bit, um, and the, the shroud does as well. But I kind of like this, I like it's um, like that because also when you uh got your cables, it does mean that you can uh have your cables sitting over the top of this, 
uh, I'm sure you'll be able to like zip clip them to the end here or something so it could end up helping make things look a little bit tidier there's not really a lot else to look at it's 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 simple you know it's club 3d because of the you know the little club on it and obviously all on the back it's yeah it's kind of like a refined version of the old 7970 sort of design that I ran for so long but I'm gonna be quiet now and we can swiftly move on and see what it looks like in the rig okay then so first things first we need a quick look at the uh, test rig it's a uh, Asus Rampage 4 Extreme Black Edition. We've got 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz memory. Corsair H105. Then we have the um, AX1500i power supply nestled away in the bottom. Then we have a GTX Neutron 240 gigabyte uh, GTX. Yeah, I've already said that bit for the operating system. And then just above it, just out of shot, is a 240 gigabyte. Force LS solid state drive which we've got all the games on now quick look at the card itself if I uh, put the camera up a little bit as well what we can do is just zoom in just so that you can see the top part of the card you can see the way the um, the back plate looks actually looks quite tidy quite nice I prefer a plain back plate um, the hoses do cover up the club that I showed you previously but it's all there, it's all nice, it's all lovely. Now, we have got the, uh, the metal bit here. Yeah, I think it all does work quite nice, to be fair. It's, um, it's more than a dual slot though, as we've spoken about before. If you look at it almost dead on, you can see down the side here that we're into the third slot. So it's pretty much a triple slot cooler, which you are gonna have to consider when you um, think about this, if you're gonna be thinking about Crossfire and SLI, and well, you know what I mean, I didn't need to say SLI, but anyway, but we've looked at it from that side, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna um, switch the camera off, drop the tripod down, just so you can take a look from uh, underneath, you know, a different angle. I know this isn't the way that you're gonna see it when it's in your rig, but hey, it's nice to see it on video. So a slightly different look, and I admit this is one that you're probably never gonna see unless you're really looking for it, but it does give you um, a better look at the uh, the way that the slots are on that side you can definitely see the screws better there and you can see it does encroach into that um, that third slot it's not quite a full three slot but you certainly you know you can't use anything in that slot that it goes down into it covers the the actual PCI slot without covering all of it also really when we think about it you can also see that there is a little bit of droop there as well so it's probably going to um, sag further down so if you did need to put say for argument's sake that little PCI Express 1 that I'm trying to try and master this look that was just there if you uh, needed to use that as your um, graphics card slot and that was your next one not only would you not really have a lot of room above it but you can also see it probably end up touching the top of the other card um, but as it is our slot is this one uh, let's try and get this again that's our one there that long one so we would have um, uh, a slot and a half of room really and it wouldn't touch and it wouldn't be too much of a problem either um, but anyway so that's a weird look at the rig anyway I think what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, fire the rig up and we're going to start uh, with some temperatures because as with all of the AMD stuff temperatures can be quite a key factor Okay then peeps, so what I've got ready is Unigen all set up as we always do, eight times anti-aliasing, 2560 by 1440, but I've got two lots of GPU-Z open. On this side we've set it up for the minimum temperatures, minimum percentage fan speed, and down here we've also got the minimum VRM temps, and then over here we've got them set for the maximum. So we can see 20% fan speed maximum so far, um, it doesn't give us a fan speed RPM, but also down here that we can see that we've had a maximum uh, VRM temp of 31 and 32, which is obviously, we've got a nice range there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run um, Unigen for about 30 minutes. I've got the door on the case on, and now thank thankfully to um, me having air conditioner, I can actually control the environment. We've got the room down to 22 degrees for this one, just to give us... Uh, a temperature that we can use for our delta in a little bit but I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to let this run okay then my lovelies so I'm just going to quit this out 
let it go back to the desktop you can see that we're coming straight off of the load program straight into our results and there we have it so we have had a maximum temperature of 70 degrees as we can see just up here which is pretty good we can obviously see the minimums over here but also when we come down because on this card it's actually got the um, probes enabled or built in however you want to put it we can actually see that the vrms have been uh the one of the vrms has been 58 the other one's gone up to about 80 degrees which is pretty good we can see though if i click these now and we go back to normal you can see that they're 61 degrees it's coming down quite quickly which is uh, pretty good. Obviously, we can't see uh, what the RPM has gone up to, but left to its own devices, the fans have gone up to 62 degrees. Now, that again uh, sounds like it's, uh, sorry, 62 degrees, 62%. Now, that again does sound like it's loads, um, but it's actually uh, not offensively loud. Um, if you compare it, now we've, uh, we did the MSI one before, which was very quiet, but obviously the temperatures were still quite warm. This one, you've got that lovely 70 degrees, which is a very healthy um, graphics card temperature for any, one, any um, GPU really, but for a 290 or a 290X, that's actually pretty damn good. And like I said, it's not offensively loud. I, I did say at the beginning, with those three fans, I thought they were going to be um, quite loud but they're not pleasantly they're not it was one of the things about this card that I have been most impressed with is uh, the combination of the temperatures and the fact that it doesn't make a stupid amount of noise either so we've we've done that side of things it's now time for us to move on and take a look at some benchmarks okay then so a quick fire mark fire mark fire strike extreme 4884 Although we've just run that live and it's slightly different to the result that we've got in the graph. The result we've got in the graph is 4865. But if you have a look there, you can see we've highlighted the uh, big bar just so that you can uh, get an idea where it is. Now that may look like it's really low in the graph, but obviously there's a lot of powerful cards that we've tested uh, all overclocked and everything. And this one's actually at stock. But if you have a look, a couple of places above it, you can see the 290X. So it's just shy of the performance of a 290X. But the most important thing is if you look below it, you can see that we've got all of the other 290s. So it's actually the quickest 290 that we've ever tested. Okay then, Vantage, uh, X-Score, because obviously this does stress the balls out of it and really does separate the uh, big cards from the little baby cards. And we've got an X-Score of 26,000. 649. Now in this graph, you can see it's a fairly little bit, a fairly little bit, closer to the top we've mixed in a few different cards with this one and essentially what we've done is uh, you can see that it's just below the 290x there's no 290s above at all we've got the uh, AMD 290x um, below it we've got the MSI 290 below it as well um, you can actually see that it's technically quicker there than um, or in, uh, in this result anyway than the MSI GTX 780 and the Asus Poseidon as well so, it, you know, that one, we well, can actually see it's above pretty much all of the 780s there. It's actually done really well. So, you know, that's a really good, uh, healthy result there for 3D Mark Vantage. So, Tomb Raider, yes, this is a screenshot, but it obviously, um, it means that we've got exactly the same results that we're going to show you on the graph. And also, it's a, a really good one that um, this is obviously a uh, AMD game as well. Um, so we can see there, minimum 60.4, maximum 110, average 80.6. And then when you uh, put it in uh, with all the graphs and everything again, you can see it does do very well. Um, there's only really 290, uh, the big 290s above it. But again, you can see it's above um, a couple of 780s there. It's above the stock AMD R9 290X. So, you know, in that respect, I mean, you can see that you've got a power coloured R9 290 down near the bottom. It has done really, really well to perform that well. So it's in the gaming and in the synthetic benchmarks, it has done and performed very, very well. So coupling all that up, um, if you do want to go and have a look at all of the other games, all of the other benchmarks, all of the other comparisons, you can click the link to go to the main review on the OC3D website. 
You made the conclusion. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And that's about as much football-esque stuff you're going to get out of me because I really don't give a monkeys. Unless England get to the final, then which ain't ever going to happen. Um, I, yeah, I don't really give a monkeys. Anyways, on topic, we're talking about the Club 3D R9 290 Royal Ace. So, award, and then we'll move on. Now this is something the trolls need to remember. So, it's an AMD card, it's an R9 290, and it's got a gold award. There's going to be people all over the planet now, falling off their chairs, passing out. I think there's going to be a couple of people at AMD are going to throw a party. But it's one of the few cards that's kind of got a really nice mix there. But it's not the first time we've given one of these a gold. But anyway, it's just one to help the trolls feel a little bit better about themselves. So, 290. Now, we know there's been driver increments because we can't retest every card that we get um, again every time a new driver comes out. It's just too, you know, intensive. I literally would need two or three people constantly retesting graphics cards if we uh, did that. And it's only little old me, so we can't really do it. But it's the quickest card that we've um, uh, had as a 290. As you've seen, it was kind of trading blows with a lot of the results that we had for 780s, and there was a couple of times we even had the reference 290X below it as well. But the critical thing is, uh, really, is that the temperatures were really good. Now, generally with one of these, it normally means that if you manage to bring the temperatures down, then you generally turned it into an absolute tornado of wind noise, and it's not something that you could, you know, could or would want to live with. I can happily tell you though that it's not like that at all. Um, when I saw the three little fans, I was honestly expecting it to be noisy and I was kind of like, oh no. Because with the Club 3D cards, they're not really renowned for having uh, a silent card at all. Now they're not gonna win any silence awards with this either, but at the same time, it's, it's not loud, it's not offensive, it's much, much better than the, um, than the reference ones. Now, the, uh, the MSI version is utterly silent, but it's like 10, 15 degrees warmer. This one, it's, um, there is a little bit of noise there, but the temperatures are far, far lower. So you've kind of got, you know, if, you're, if you've always got your cans on, or, you know, it's just a heavy gaming system or something like that, then, you know, this is really going to treat you well. And something else that a lot of people are kind of going to go is, oh, you didn't overclock it. Now, with the overclocking, it was pretty much, uh, it did on par what all of the other cards have as well. Performance was on par with the other cards as well, but I didn't particularly feel that I wanted to tarnish it with the overclocking results because this thing is actually so good out the box that you can see in our graphs that it's, it's trading blows with, you know, it's beaten all the 290s already, most importantly, at stock, but most importantly, and obviously if I'd have put overclock results in, I would have had to put overclock results for everything in, which would have meant the glass, graphs were longer, and then it also would have meant that we would have, um, it, it kind of, like I said, it takes the shine away from it, because most of you are gonna get one of these, bang it in, and forget about it. And when you do buy one of these, bang it in, and forget about it, it's wiping the floor of a lot of the other ones. Um, obviously there's a good healthy overclock there as well, but again, temps are all kept in check, it's not overly noisy, performance is really good, and it's just one of those things. Now with the, uh, the Club 3D, they've got kind of a raw uh, design to them, they're not all pretty, they're not, you know, all arty farty, you know, crafted heat sinks, you know, you know, bent bits of metal and plastic and all that kind of shit, it's just about you know, a nice meaty heat sink, which you can see a bit, and then, you know, the fans over the top with a metal shroud around it. It's kind of got like an industrial kind of look to it. But if you're a customizer, just think that, that me the metal bit with the three circles that goes over the fans, that could come off quite easily and be painted. The heat, the back plate, as long as you only painted the top bit, you could easily paint that as well. Um, now, it is going to, the, as far as the back plate is concerned, it is going to, you know, uh, impact the cooling ability of that. But the bits that are underneath it aren't particularly, you, you don't really need to worry about that much anyway. And uh, to be honest with you, I can't even, now I've said it, see many contact points. It's probably just picking up heat from the card that's underneath. So if you did want to paint it, you could do and make a nice feature on your card. 
Club 3D might not thank you because it means you're going to be painted over their logo, but you've still got the um, the Cloverleaf or the Club or whatever the bloody hell is. Of course it's the Club, it's Club 3D, Tom. Um, you've still got that in the middle, so that'll make that stand out even more. Just putting that idea out you if you want to ruin your warranty. But other than that, it's... Um, it's done really well. It's a really well-balanced sort of card. They've kept the temps in check. It's not overly noisy. Performs really well thanks to the overclock. Um, it, it's all good. It's just one of those. It's a bloody gold award. If you're looking for a 290, awesome. The only thing to keep in mind, if people are now going to be falling over themselves to buy this for a mining rig because you're still insane enough to be wasting electric on it, is it's not dual slot. It's two and a half. So you'd need to make sure that you had at least three slots between the cards if you were going to run uh, more than one of them. But other than that, it's all gravy. Anyway, I've had a bit of a mental one today, so I'm going to uh, leave this portion of the video. Don't forget about the bit at the end. Anyway, it's now... Uh, yep, 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 it's Tiny Tom Logan. <laughs> out. <laughs> Ding! Okay then peeps, so hidden bit, and you may find these starting to become uh, a little more frequent, although the content that's in them is probably not going to be the type of thing that I'm going to be saying today. So I have a rather uh, strange t-shirt on, and it's, it's the gas man, and it's Richard Richard and Eddie from Bottom, and it's basically Rick Mail and Eddie Edmondson, and it's Rick Mail sh shouting uh, at Eddie Edmondson, it's the gas man, and it's a classic Bottom um, uh, sketch and it's just one that if you're a bottom fan you know exactly what I'm on about and the reason why I've got it on is based if you 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 may know you may not Rick Mail sadly passed away just recently and at the day of filming um, it's actually the day that they were going to bury him now uh, Rick Mail is, is an amazing British actor and he's someone that I've kind of grown up with um, if you didn't know, um, you know, some of the stuff that he'd done, I mean, I was always, I was never really allowed to watch it, but I did watch the young ones, and Bottom was just something that I used to thoroughly, thoroughly wet my pants about. It's the most stupid kind of like comedy sketch sitcom type thing at the time, and it was just utter genius. He did do other films and he did do other bits and bobs, but those two are the two things that really signify him. And, and kind of, when you think about the way he acted in uh, Bottom and uh, The Young Ones, it kind of like follows suit through apart from the film that he did. But anyway, so this is just me with a, you know, a little polite tip of the cap to him. I've got me a uh, gas man shirt on, which I've, I wore up to Sainsbury's earlier on actually, and I'm not even joking, two people um one of them actually said you know brilliant t-shirt and then obviously knew what was going on but there was another bloke that kind of like caught his eye and kind of like doffed this cap as well as if to say i know why you're wearing it um so great sad loss to um comedy in general i think but um so thoughts go out to all his family and all that kind of stuff he will be sorely missed um but if you've never heard of him Go and download some episodes of Bottom. It's proper, funny, old school British humour. And if I've done nothing else by the end of this video but made a couple of people find out how fucking hilarious that was, then I'll be a happy man. But rest in peace, dear sir. I hope you make everyone laugh up there. Say hello to my mum for me. And yeah, that was a bit of a weird one. Say hello to my mum for me. You're not going to watch this video or anything, but anyway, it'd be nice if you did. Anyway, this is Tiny Tom Logan out.